Stand by to roll film. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's begin. Let's begin. Let's begin. Let's begin. Let's begin! went on the air in 1952, viewers were greeted by the first Canadian television star. His name was Uncle Chichimus. Now's your chance to search for Canadian talent. Uncle Chichimus was the first in a long line of famous CBC puppets. His job, telling viewers what programs were on TV that night. Well, what's on CBC Theatre tonight at 8.30? A world of glamour and excitement would now unfold right there in your living room. You could see a show. Catch a game. Open up, you're losing height too fast. Watch the airspeed, lift the nose up, open Go up, to the up, movies. Up, 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 man, open up! He heard you, he heard you. Or join a celebration halfway around the world. Television made life better. When Elizabeth II was crowned in 1953, sales of TV sets soared all over the country. Her family looked on from the royal box in the Abbey. Her mother, her sister, and son, the Bonnie Prince Charlie. Churchill called it the beginning of a new Elizabethan era, and these CBC films of the ceremony were flown by jet plane to Canada for first showing in North America the same day. This was a major moment for the CBC. Television had made ordinary Canadians witnesses of history. It was a wonderful spectacle. Millions of people all over the world saw it. Even today, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's not of our world, you know. Hmm? Would you like more tea, Marjorie? I'd love another cup. Thank you. Me, thank you. I guess I should be keeping an eye on that. I remember that my parents were invited by their friends. Mm. I mean, this was quite a big deal. Probably the coronation stands out as something that was stupendous, even in, in, for no other terms than its length, because, of course, it went for hours and hours and hours. But was that particularly spectacular? Like, did you expect that you'd be able to watch it that fast? It's like being there, isn't it, really? In fact, I'm sure we get much better views than they do in the Abbey for all these occasions. Oh, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. now, yeah. Would you like a sandwich? Yes, please. I'll have a cheese sandwich, I guess. No crust. Mm-hmm. <laughs> May I say that the cup should be on the saucer? Oh, my. <laughs> we'll get right on that there. <laughs> The CBC, and its connected stations along the way, takes pleasure in presenting Juliet. Canadians who had TVs before the CBC went on the air had been watching American TV celebrities on American TV. Suddenly, we had our own. Now, let's meet and greet your pet, Juliet. Juliet 
had been a popular radio star, but on television, the voluptuous blonde had Canadians eating out of her hand. Should I care? Life is one long jubilee, as long as I care for you. From television, the lovely and talented Toby Robbins. From the stage on television, lovely Toby Robbins. And Miss Toby Robbins, the outstanding young actress who is also by far the best looking panel member on Front Page Challenge. <laughs> of course, Toby Robbins was the only woman on Front Page Challenge. And perfect because she was never too threatening. What do you think it is, Toby? <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling it's brunette, am I right? It is indeed. An overwhelming majority decided that you should be a brunette. And now from the Toronto Star, Mr. Pierre Burton, perhaps one of the most controversial columnists of our time. In today's paper, they said 32 inch waves. If they took 10 off, they'd be right. It's 22. <laughs> what are, let's just get the measurements for the record, can we? He's a scientist, you understand. Pierre. <laughs> From the very beginning, Pierre Burton knew how to flirt no, with the camera. No. Do you want my bones? <laughs> uh, not your bones, dear, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we better change this cover. And here's a happy half hour for you with Don Messer and his Islanders. Now, Don Messer, on the other hand, had a more rustic turn. With cloudy conditions, a wind from the west, rather windy. Percy Saltzman, the weatherman, was famous for his playful antics. That, then, is the general weather picture, and, and that is the weather. What can we expect for tomorrow? He was charming and witty. What the heck is that? Fall out some chocolate, remember? And most of all, he and his TV pals always looked like they were having fun. We got now, Percy. This is nice. Uh, Percy, just hang on real tight now. What do you mean? Oh, this will do a lot for you. Ease your nervous tension and everything. Uh, press forward. That's it. That's oh, it. sort of a... Throw the juice on, John. The juice? Wait, I haven't done anything. It's all right. It's okay. Now, just take it easy. This wasn't long after the war, and fun was big. TV Land was an amazing new place where every single post-war fantasy was indulged. <laughs> Joyce Davidson, a talk show host, got to ride the vehicle of the future. Wally Coster, appearing on Cross Canada Hit Parade, made a lunar landing long before Neil Armstrong. When you climb the highest mountain And the clouds hold the sun And get this, William Shatner got to be the man of the future who comes from space and time travels to the present. Tears. It's the first time I've seen a woman cry. I don't know who you are, but please, please take me away from here. You're frightened. How, how can I show you? Perhaps if I showed you I'm just a man, a human being like yourself. Yes, now look, look, see, just, just man, man, see, look, look, man. Oh, no, <laughs> that's no good. What savage creatures you were. Yet, I know, of course, Micah. She studied ancient Canadian. I'll talk with her to come immediately. <laughs> oh, how that woman. She's always talked, waving to somebody. Telepathic chit-chat. It was escapism, pure and simple. <sighs> She'll be over immediately. 
The world was actually a much darker place. The 50s was a terrifying decade. At 10.50 on Wednesday morning, Calgary's mayor pressed the button, started the sirens wailing, and triggered a mass evacuation of one quarter of Calgary's suburbs. This was a typical civil defense drill. It was the Cold War at its meanest. Canadians feared the world might blow up at any moment. Hi. Now you can enjoy mixing magic. Poof. Television could make all that go away. And your very first cake will look like this. Mmm. Higher and lighter. Start enjoying sunbeam mixing magic now in white, pink, turquoise, yellow, or chrome. They sold a simpler, safer world. Look to sunbeam for value through quality. The television world was all new and had none of the baggage of history. It was a great place to work. CBC attracted some of the most creative minds in the country. Nothing they did was predictable. Hi, I'm just pulling out a gray hair. Are well, you ready to start, kid? Yeah, I'm ready to start. Up we go. Now, Toby. Yes, sir. Critics, television critics, say that Canadian television doesn't have any women who have sex appeal. Is this true? Well, I think they all have, but of course I've Some producer probably sold this as a brilliant metaphor for an interview. I mean, being a woman, of course, I'm not qualified to say what Canadian women have it and what Canadian women don't. But uh, I would think it varies from man to man. Yes, uh -huh. I think you're quite There's right. There's a sex symbol, Marilyn Monroe, but... Uh, Too bad you couldn't really follow the conversation. The sexiest woman alive. Mm -hmm. Starring me, I heard. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, and this was one of the early on-location interviews. The idea being that everyone would be more relaxed outside the confines of a TV studio. I know you. This is Pierre Burton, relaxed. This is Brother Copernicus, Dr. Robert Linton French, Brother John Payne. But it didn't matter because all of this was being done for the very first time. Good evening, scanners. I'm Pat Patterson. First of all, I'd like you to meet a little gadget that was devised for scan, the thing that enables you to see that whirling title at the beginning of the program. This was dreamed up by Jeff Cheesebur of the graphics department. I find it rather fascinating. The people who were creating television obviously loved television. Good evening, Winnipeg and Toronto. They even had a show about how TV was done. I'm Bruce Marsh, and uh, this is Scan. All about CBC television. All right, the humans are here. Yeah, well, thank you very much, pal. I mean, thanks, old pal. On tabloid, they dished out satirical spoofs night after night. Do you just hate celebrating your own birthday? Are you aware that he knows you're getting older and looking older because your eyelashes are thinning out? Well, Tinkerbell eyelashes will change all that. You don't have to walk around feeling unprotected anymore and getting a cold in those pretty eyes. And Tinkerbell, Tinkerbell eyelashes just last and last. Why, I've had mine on for, for days and days and still no sign of, of that unsightly cracking or peeling. One of the most celebrated composers of electronic music, uh, space music it's sometimes called, is Manchuria-born Vladimir Yusachevsky. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to uh, let the people listen to an example of what we've been talking about. This particular composition, written by Professor Yusachevsky, is called... What is it again? Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. In an otherwise dreary and conservative decade, they dared to be offbeat and quirky. We help to eliminate part of absentism. And sometimes explored untold threats to humanity. 
How Certainly do you go expensive. about uh, cleaning up a dirty phone, Mr. Bennett? Well, we have a germicide. And Is it quite a simple operation, or do you use surgery? Or well, we have actually trained girls, you see, that go around cleaning phones and sterilizing them. Now, what we do, we put a dumbbell on the actual phone. What does that do? Now, this stops it from uh, interrupting any in or outgoing calls. I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, this earpiece and mouthpiece is actually sterilized. Uh, is the earpiece uh, dangerous too? Uh, very much so. In fact, um, you'll find that with the mouthpiece, we can counteract this by our own acid that comes from our mouth. Right? It's the 50th anniversary of the CBC. Oh, oh, oh. Can I just yeah. chat with you a second about? Sure. Okay. So good. You got to leave the hat on. So. Oh, I'm leaving the hat on. Okay. Are you going to turn around and face the no. camera? No. <laughs> You're not. Ask me the question. Do you think Canada would be different if we didn't have Canadian television? Oh, definitely, because we'd have American television. And what would that be like if we just had American television? Would it make a difference? I think it would make a big difference, because I know even from being overseas, living overseas, that's all I saw was American television, and I realized it is different. You're going to stay like that the whole time? Ask me the question. Oh, well, I'm going to ask you, do you watch Canadian television? Uh, yes, but I prefer CBC radio. How do you think Canada would be different if we had no Canadian television? Oh, it would be even worse. It would be worse, definitely. Which, what if we had no television? What if television just didn't exist? I wouldn't mind, I have to say. I, I, I think, uh, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of it that just inherently rots the brain. Uh, tell me, good people, how many hours a day is TV watched in your house? Uh, the DeWolfs in Winnipeg. Well, ours comes on before I get home from work which is around 5.30 or 6. I imagine it comes on around 4. I imagine Peg looks at it some in the afternoon. And it's on uh, all night until the late movie is finished, but we're quite avid watchers of it. Well, around six hours, maybe seven. The weekend, of course, we have the late show on Saturday evenings. Well, I'd say about 10 to 12 hours. Oh, I would say about uh, five or six hours, uh, depending on uh, whether there's anything special on or not. It's no secret that having a receptive audience helps a lot. The confidence that came from knowing that people were watching and wanted more has never been seen again. It allowed the creators of television to strive for bigger and better things. This production of Swan Lake, produced in 1956, featured the National Ballet of Canada. CBC Television had come a long way since opening night. it was hard for the manufacturers to keep up with the demand for television sets. At the CBC, they had a different set of problems. CBC television was only available in central Canada, and just filling the airwaves was often a challenge. We've got our cameras up in Toronto, in the fashion district. We've had uh, the camera set up for about a half an hour. We haven't been able to talk to anyone yet, but we have high hopes. Uh, yes, we have. Oh, yes. Here we have a very attractive young lady. Could I say something to you, please? Yes. Good morning, first Good morning. of all. What is your name, please? Lenny Golden. Lenny, I see you have a very attractive outfit on there. Thank and, you. And uh, the hat especially is uh, fascinating. We have American pennies uh, fastened onto it. Uh, is it a new spring hat? Oh, yes, it is. Very nice indeed. indeed. Uh, it's black with all kinds of uh, flowers. Yes, would you show it to us, to our audience? <laughs> you seem to have an unhappy dog there. Uh, is that uh, quiet boy? 
Eh? <laughs> He's not very happy. Is this a Canadian original? Yes, this is a Kathy original. Looks very beautiful indeed. <laughs> the 50s, Canada went through incredible growth and change. The Trans-Canada Highway was being completed, and rail service was being extended and improved. You could travel across Canada in record time and comfort. To be the national network, the CBC also had to reach from coast to coast. So between 1952 and 1957, with the help of government loans, the network grew and grew and grew. And on Dominion Day 1958, the CBC president, Alphonse Rimet, announced their accomplishment on the air. This special program marks another important step in the spectacular growth of Canadian television. And it is only fitting that the official opening of our microwave network the longest in the world should take place on Dominion Day as another powerful link in the chain of Canadian unity. To mark the occasion, a special broadcast. A memo to Champlain. They put Joyce Davidson and the French network's star journalist, none other than René Levesque, in the same studio and tangled them in bilingual acrobatics. July 1st, 1958. Today, another milestone. The next hour and a half, what you will see is, for the first time, a live coast-to-coast -coast Trans-Canada telecast. The microwave network of television is now completed from the Atlantic to the Pacific and... You know what I'm going to say? We've got, a problem. We've got a problem here. In fact, uh, it's a catastrophe. We're a bilingual nation, and we've always kind of suspected it was a mixed blessing, but now we know. But even you, Rene, can't speak both languages at the same time. Well, we just tried that. We'll do it again. <laughs> Often awkward or downright sentimental, shows like these helped Canadians to see how vast and diverse their country was. Hello, okay. Mr. Clark. <clears throat> what oh. kind of a tree is that? <laughs> this is a Douglas fir tree. Well, naturally, we're in B.C. What are those markers on it? Well, at the bottom is uh, 1492 is when discover, uh, Columbus discovered America. That was just a seedling tree then. How things changed through the years with Farmer's Wife out there? Oh, it has changed tremendously. Of course, we've come from the age of the oxen and the breaking up of the prairie sod to now we have modern cars and methods of transportation. There's been tremendous changes here, there's no doubt about that. CBC showed Canada to Canada like never before. The political naivete of the times, coupled with the magic of television, made all of our differences suddenly seem surmountable. Well, there we are. <laughs> Toute la famille, as we say in English, one big happy family. But CBC soon discovered television's most enduring magic, the spell that it casts on children. Howdy Doody was an American show rewritten for Canada. It was TV for kids, and at the beginning, that was good enough. And then, in 1958, CBC found an original. Look up. Look way up. A sleepy day on the farm. There are days like that when everyone is sleepy. Do you think Rusty is sleepy in the book bag? He might be. We'll see. I'll hurry over first and go in the back door so that I can let the drawbridge down and open the big front doors for you. Are you ready? Here's my castle.
program based on the unique personality of the giant who greeted children every day. Here's one little chair for one of you and a bigger chair for two more to curl up in. And in the middle, a rocking chair for someone who likes to rock. And here's our tree, still decorated, and our Christmas cards all hung on the fireplace. The Christmas Bob Hami was his real name, and his passion was teaching kids to love music and books. But way up. And I'll call Rusty, and we'll see if he's sleeping in the book bag. I don't think he is. Rusty. Rusty? Oh, hi, friendly. Merry Christmas, friendly. And until he retired, he was every kid's friend, babysitter, even parent. Everyone fell for the friendly giant. the NDP, the Tories, and the Liberal Party. So I'm assuming that all of you watched Friendly at some point in your life? Or he looks a lot smaller when you just close. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you had an argument one time with my sister about which chair you would get. Like, you know, we both wanted to get the, the armchair that you'd curl up in as opposed okay. to the rocking chair or the other chair. Well, did anyone else have a favorite chair? Rocker. Yeah, okay. I had the rocking. Oh, I like the double up chair. How, was there anyone you wanted to double up with? Or? Uh, you. No. <laughs> you know, growing up in a large family like I did with nine kids, you know, if you had your own chair, it was That'd cool. Be like, How come Friendly doesn't have his shoes polished? How many years? 29 years? Oh, 20 years. Maybe he couldn't afford an extra pair of shoes. shoes. I know. That's the actual ones, eh? You know what really got me about Rusty was how did he get all that stuff in the bag? I know. You know, like Rusty's bag is just magic. He can always <laughs> pull stuff out of there. Oh, there had to be like a secret passage into that sack because he had so much stuff in there. I mean, every day he'd pull something different out of that bag. But you can yeah, you wouldn't tickle, tickle the bag. Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't want to tickle the bag, though. <laughs> Go ahead, you do it this Go on in. We got permission. We're wearing really the gloves. You got the gloves on. You got the gloves on. Yeah. Well, he's going to do it. <laughs> You can't touch Rusty. No. You don't touch him. No. You see the size of Jerome. <laughs> behind there. He's huge. He's a big Jerome. Performing well on TV is every politician's dream. Television and politics met up in a significant way for the first time in the 1957 federal election campaign. John Diefenbaker was the new leader of the Tory party. The Liberals, then led by Prime Minister Louis Saint Laurent, had held power for 22 years. I, I don't refer to any particular issues because it seems to me that uh, there really is only one issue, and uh, that is uh, what uh, uh, will be a good government for Canada to meet the circumstances as they may develop. Saint Laurent didn't get the sound right. This is a time of great. Canada, the raising of a nation, passing something of the greatness of our past, for a nation without a past, has little hope for a future. The chief, however, this was always good theater. Now, he was good television. Unity requires it, security demands it, nation will ensure it. Always the ham, he loved the camera, and the camera loved him back. 7 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time on election night, 1957. The Canadian press has just reported in a bulletin at 10.18 at p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the Liberals have failed to obtain an overall majority. I don't think any member of any party really uh, foresaw the situation that faces us right at this moment. And on election night, the new television constituency delivered him victory. I don't know. No one can ever tell why voters voted as they did. All they can, uh, all anyone can say is that that they did. 
Strong images broadcast coast to coast help create national myths. The Arrow 1, Canada's first supersonic fighter plane, is ready to fly after five years of work and planning by 5,000 people at Admiral of Canada near Toronto. On the ground, all is tense and ready. The plane roars off the ground on her maiden flight. The day they tested the Avro Arrow was the beginning of a short-lived supersonic dream. The sports year of 1955 was marked by a marathon swim craze. The teenage girl who set it off was Marilyn Bell, youngest swimmer ever to cross the English Channel. The nation cheered watching news reports of Marilyn Bell's marathon swims. Up until yesterday, Ripple Rock was located smack in the middle of Seymour Narrows, about 100 miles north of Vancouver. This explosion carried live on television opened the BC coastline to larger ships. It was the triumph of technology. No longer bound to the studio, the television camera could be almost anywhere and bring you almost anything. So much would change. Hello, Lloyd McGinnis at the Pithead in Spring Hill. You receive me now? Yes, I'm getting you now. Good, Lloyd, there are one or two questions I have for you. You mentioned uh, there an air pipe. Now, our television watchers are possibly uh, not aware of just what has happened down there. Could you bring us up to date on that? On October 23, 1958, one of the mines at the Cumberland Rail and Coal Company in Spring Hill, Nova Scotia, imploded. It was early in the evening. The people in the town still today remember hearing an explosion about four minutes. 174 men were trapped deep underground, under rock and coal. 74 died. And Sadie, do you know what happened to your husband? You couldn't see him. That was the hardest, not seeing him. And my minister, Reverend Knippel, I had the coffee book that far open. And I thought, well, I was going to make sure if he was there. And he caught me. And he said, you're not allowed to do it. He was the first one down, the last one they brought out. It was the first live coverage of a disaster in Canada and television played a huge role. CBC pictures were seen everywhere. Here comes the stretcher with Gorley Kemp on it. Your name was announced down the mine to a station. It was announced there to the surface, and that's how they knew if you were living or dead. And there was people waiting all night, three and four in the morning, until the announcer says, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, but that's all the survivors. Vice President and General Manager, Mr. Harold Gordon, expressed the opinion that there are no more men alive underground in the number two colliery. Sympathy, money, and relief poured in from across Canada and around the world. But something else happened. For the first time, television exposed a town's grief for all to see, and then played it and played it for years to come. It's proven to be too much for some people who lost fathers, brothers, husbands, friends. I hate seeing it all the time. We try to forget. And it's hard watching knowing what happened, what you went through. You know, I get cold every time I see it. I always say they shouldn't show it so often where people try to forget. But... Well, thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right there. I'm tough. I'm tough. Yes, I'm I know that. You worked in the mine. That was a special report from Spring Hill. We return now to the program in progress. Every time you turn on your TV, there's crime and murder and delinquency. From the beginning, Wayne and Schuster understood the power of television. From a survey we've been making, like our dear friend Kate Aiken, comedy is what they'd rather see. Give a murder to Lord, lots of mayhem and gore, and they'll reach out and turn off that dial. But 
give him a clip, and brother, they'll flip, cause everybody loves to smile. Oh, the tough western guy with the gun on his thigh is a goon who'll be soon out of style. But give him a gag, and it's in the bag, cause everybody loves to smile. Hey, Amanda, yeah. where are you from, Montreal? No, we're from Toronto. Their brand of Canadian content was as unselfconscious as it yeah, was it's funny. Very funny, you know. The only city in Canada that you Americans seem to have heard of is Montreal. Oh, I'm not an American. I'm from Hamilton. <laughs> Tell our viewers exactly how you feel about your frozen north. My frozen north is wonderful, but my frozen south is terrible. <laughs> That's what I like about this town. Oh, but sorry. not everyone at the CBC had their light touch when it came to the Canadian identity. Do you feel that there is such a thing as a distinctively Canadian approach to television? I think there is, Bruce. I think that Canadians as a group of people are quite distinctive, and I think that their television mirrors that sort of distinction. Montreal represents a strange condition. You see, there's the English-speaking population, and there's the French-Canadian uh, population. And the English-speaking population is about the same size as Hamilton that creates the rich intellectual life that you uh, well, term a my gold fine well, you rich well, intellectual you, you, you can come to Ingo too I killed hair you can come up to the public loves laughter and laughter is what we're after cows and horses are fine but not as fine as a chorus line from the start Wayne and Schuster were Canada at its best what do you think, partner? Them are the kind of calves I'd like to round up. There's the tough private dick who can draw on you quick and can kill you in Peter Gunn style. But we prefer folks to kill you with jokes and keep you rolling in the eye. Cause everybody loves to smile. Are you all with the front there? Whatever you want. We were neighbors with the Schusters. Yeah. And the children were, were friends. They were pals. Well, Johnny Wayne is, was Johnny Wine. Yes. Because my son-in-law and Johnny are cousins. We're cousins. The Wine Gardens lived on Palmerston Boulevard, and I lived two, I was raised two blocks away from there. That was a long, long time ago, because my daughter that was friends with his daughter is already a, a lawyer, successful right. lawyer. So now we got, we've got a cousin, a <laughs> next door neighbor, and someone who's in the neighborhood. Did anyone watch them on TV? All the time. Yeah. We watched them they all, they were like brilliant. Do you remember the pumpernickel story, Joe? The end was so great. When they opened the cover and all the pumpernickels were flying. And they were packed. Right. And one was practically buried. And then he came out and he said, and here I have a collar. And that's only for Friday. Listen, they, they were great. Yeah. And as Ed said, they were great ambassadors for Canada. They loved Canada so much, to the extent where they introduced the idea of taking, taking cities, Toronto, Montreal, talking about them, skits and so forth. And then I remember the two that they stressed most of all was Medicine Hat and Chikamuchi or something. Chikamuchi. That's right. What was the name of them? Chikudemi. Chikudemi, that's Chikudemi. it, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. it. The Jewish community was very proud of Wayne and Schuster. They identified themselves with expressions and humorous anecdotes and sayings that was very appealing, very enjoyable, and we were very proud of it. Yep. Right, Joe? Yes. Would, you, would you agree with me or not? Yes. Okay. They were just great. Okay. And so until our very next meeting. Good night, all. For everyone at the CBC, the 50s was a learning experience. Now remember, the sequence of shots is extremely important. New recruits were drilled in what was then considered the gospel of television. 150 individual shots, some of them varying in length from two seconds to two or three minutes. And it's that order of shots that's very, very important. But all the training in the world didn't always translate into great programming decisions. 
Here was one experiment. Beautiful spring for my match. The Plouffe family was a huge success in Quebec, so they translated it. What are you doing there? Uh, I'm drinking to the health of my sorrow. Just as I thought, loaded it again. But the poignancy of this working class family straddling the beginnings of the quiet revolution was lost on English Canada. I don't know if Stan went to Easter Communion. It's him that Tanka Ludeon should have taken to the monastery to make a retreat, not our husband. In the bigger cities, few people watched. Getting people to tune in to the CBC has always been important because, despite government grants, the CBC always needs sponsors. Players and pleasures go together. Have a players and you'll have pure pleasure. While the smoky ever. Players and pleasure go together. Players and pleasure? Go together? Yes. Is that like that? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Oh, that was it. Players and pleasure. Go together. Let's take one. You remember that? <laughs> That's excellent. Wildest monkey ever. Pure pleasure. It didn't go like that quite, though, did it? Oh, I got the words very <laughs> well. I think we have the words on a piece of cardboard in fact. Yeah, we do. Pleasure and pleasure. Go together. Players and pleasure go together. I never smoked players, though. You didn't. What Is did you smoke? Is that bad? No. Oh, players um, aren't a sponsor. What? They're not a sponsor. Oh, they're not a sponsor. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you're done with me now? I'm done with you now. You can go. Do you watch CBC television programs at all? Quite frequently. What do you think of them? Uh, I think their caliber has increased. I think they're on the way up. Do you watch CBC television programs? Yes, very often. What's your opinion of them? Well, from a comparison standpoint, I would say it compares most favorably with any of them. Yes, I think uh, the programming is uh, very well paced. Do you find them interesting to watch? Uh, yes, I do. I think there's a great deal of variety on the show itself. During the next 30 minutes, you'll meet three personalities who made history on the nation's front pages. Tonight, on Front Page Challenge. Hits came in unlikely places. Of all things, a game show put on as a summer replacement. Today, Front Page Challenge stands out as one of the most watched and loved programs of all time. All right, panel, this time we've hidden our challenger from you. Uh, there is an international story for you to go after in the fourth. It was the old guess who the mystery time. guest is. This story happened on land. Yes. Did it happen on, uh, in North America? Yes. In the United States? Yes. The secret so was simple. Great panel, great moderator, and incredible guests with incredible stories. Alabama. Was this yes. the, bus, the bus business in Alabama? I've forgotten the name of the town. It was Birmingham, Alabama, wasn't it? It's uh, Montgomery, actually, Montgomery. Pierre. We'll give it to you on that in just under two minutes. The actual headline, uh, segregation on buses declared illegal following the Negro boycott. Tonight's front page challenge welcomes in person Reverend Martin Luther King. And here is Rocket Richard in person. Tonight's front page challenge welcomes Errol Flynn. This is Eleanor Roosevelt, tonight's second guest on front page challenge. Tonight, Igor Gusenko makes his first live television appearance on front page challenge. For security reasons, we've disguised Mr. Gusenko's voice as well as his appearance as he tries to stump the panel with his front page story. Well, I'd like to sort of laugh it up a bit tonight, so is this likely to be a happy event that we're looking for? Happy? Mm-hmm. I, I don't think the challenger would agree that it was particularly happy. It's an iffy, sort of an iffy. Uh, front page challenge was on the air for the next 38 years. I'm thinking of a show, okay, in my head, and you can ask me questions, yes, no type questions, until you answer, until you guess the show. What time is it on? It's not on. Is it news? No. It's not news. No. Is it drama? No. Is it a comedy show? No. <laughs> is, it, is it a drama? No. no it's no. not a drama. 
When can I give up? How long do I have to do this for? As long as it takes. We have a 65 minute tape. <laughs> Documentary? No. Not a documentary. What the hell it could possibly be? Is it sport? No. It's not sport. Okay. Kind of current affairs -y. Current affairs. Current affairs -y. Oh, right. And you'd yeah. be wondering, who is it? Yeah. And I might disguise my voice and go, Yes. I don't know. And I know the show. And you would say, but is I this a story that takes place show. in Manitoba? Yes. And I would say, no. <laughs> Front page challenge. Yes. Front page challenge. That's, That's it. 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 All right. Front page challenge. That's it. There we go. So it's not front page challenge, is it? Yes. <gasps> yes. Quiz show? Yes. Front page challenge? Yes. That was good. Yeah, I knew he would know it. Did yeah. you ever watch it? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, wasn't Pierre Burton on there? Pierre Burton was Pierre on there? Pierre Burton was on there one time. Was I love that show. I've been watching it since I was like six or something. Really? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And now, here's Country Hoedown. In its sometimes fumbling attempts to reach out to a wide audience, the CBC stumbled onto pure gold. And starring Tommy Common, the Haim sister, Tommy Hunter, King Gatham, Sons of the West. When they put country on, people watched. Lots of people. The people who ran the CBC were career urban types. But the most loyal audience was rural, more conservative, and older. There was a time when I believed that you belonged to me. Country Hoedown introduced, among others, Tommy Hunter. To a memory. The more we tried to learn and love, the more we drift apart. From Halifax, Nova Scotia, on the CBC, it's Don Messer's Jubilee. Don Messer started out as a summer replacement for Country Hoedown. Got my dance boots on, got my Sunday pants, going to my dance tonight. His standbys, Charlie Chamberlain and Marg Osborne, invited Canadians week in and week out to join their party. It was a date that millions accepted. Funny thing was, the man at the center of all this was almost always in the background, except when he fiddled. You see, Don Messer was the strong, silent type, the kind of guy that Canadians like. Obviously, because CBC's down-home country music tradition was always at the top of the ratings and has only been outlived by one thing. It's hockey night in Canada. Tonight, Toronto Maple Leafs and New York Rangers. Play-by-play by, play by Foster Hewitt. If, in its first decade, CBC television changed anything about life in this country, this was it. Anyone who remembers will tell you that before television, unless you lived in Toronto or Montreal and were rich enough to afford tickets, you could only imagine what an NHL game looked like. Thompson races back to the lead. That's length of trailing. Try to go in and the first games were broadcast in the fall of 1952. And from then on, families across the country gathered in front of the television set Saturday nights. And nobody was allowed to talk while Foster Hewitt or Danny Gallivan were doing the play-by-play. -play. Still today, nothing draws viewers like hockey. Per chance, anyone here watch hockey night in Canada? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I did. It was a big topic within the family. Like yeah. at that age, I remember being ten, and 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, and I was a big fan of the Calgary Flames, and they won the Stanley Cup that year, and I was so happy. <laughs> I used to live in a really small town, so someone, like, it was about four hours from Toronto, so we'd never really had the opportunity to go to a Leaf game or anything because it's so far away, mm -hmm. but, like, you can still experience them and watch them weekly on TV. It hasn't even changed that much. It, it's something that hasn't changed, like, society's progressed so much, but you still, you'll always have Hockey Night Canada, and, mm -hmm. you know, it, maybe it's the same as it was 30 years ago. It was Hockey Night Canada. Today we have Hockey Night Canada, and it's something, you know, that you can still always hold on to. Yeah. And so the 1950s came and went on CBC television. Maybe more sophisticated towards the end, but still as happy-go-lucky and as innocent as ever. I'm Rick Mercer. Join us to see what the 60s looked like. Our story continues. The Sunday nights we spent with you The songs we sang all season through We'll have these moments to remember All season long, it's been a ball My thanks go out to one and all We'll have these moments to remember To Joyce to Blanche, to Allen, to the Carlo Carter Three, to Howard Cable, and the band, our thanks to CGE, our singers and our dancers too, all help to see our season through. We'll have these moments to remember. 